Hey mums, soon to be mums, people who just want some good old life hacks. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd do like another video, um, what I've done in preparation for the baby. So we are currently two days overdue and counting. As much as I've had an amazing pregnancy and just been so blessed, I'm very much ready for baby to come out right now so I can ride specifically so I can ride and you know bend over and reach things <laughs> um, so I thought I'd do one that's really important to me because I have got horses um, in my care um, and that is what I do about feeding um, the big thing is when I go into labor or, you know, while I'm in hospital because I'm hoping to stay in for a few days or come home with a baby newborn, I don't want to be thinking, oh, my God, my horses are missing out. I don't want to be going, oh, my God, are they getting the right things? Um, and I don't want to be just going, here's some, some random, whether it's my better half or whether it's um, one of my students, can you feed my horses and just take the reins and go for gold? Um, because they are on a strict feeding plan at the moment. I have three of them up here with me on the Central Coast. That is Phoenix, my dressage boy, um, and also the main horse I teach lessons on. Lyra, who is my um, dressage, and I'd like to actually try some eventing with her because she jumps quite well. Um, she does sort of more me when I'm riding um, and advanced riders or riders who need more stability work, walk and trot. Um, she doesn't do heaps of canter at this point in time because she hasn't been in the right work program. She has a locking patella behind, so she gets a special mix of feed, so she's got to be fed separately. And then my youngest, Harlow, who is also five months in foal and has decided about 10 days to go to um, <laughs> mess up her hind legs. So we've had the um, equine vet hospital out ultrasounding and what have you so she's getting painkillers and things like that as well so just to just to add to it guys okay so basically what I've done is um, I have all my feeds in my feed room of course that's where you keep it um, uh, what I've done is I've set up three days worth of feed dry feed in buckets so basically it's got the horse's name on it Phoenix, Lyra or Harlow, it's got, they're stacked three high. So, you know, if there's three days, which I'm assuming it would be the day I go into labor, the second day I'm in hospital, the day I'm home, that's three pre-made feeds um, that I don't have to think about. Well, three sets of pre-made feeds I don't have to think about. Um, I can ask my beautiful fiance to go and do it, or I can ask one of my students, um, Quite a few of my students have helped me feed, especially in these last few weeks where it just gets harder for me to carry everything in and out and in and out. And I'm quite breathless. So they have a really good idea of what's expected. Um, if it was to take longer, if there's some sort of complication and, you know, it's not a three day thing, I've actually labeled each of my feed bins um, who gets what and how much. So basically, say I use loose and chaff um, on the top of the bin, it's got loose and chaff it's got a number one because it's the first thing that goes in the bucket and it's got times two scoops all horses um speedy beat so i love beat pulp it's number two speedy beat two scoops of speedy beat all horses so i literally have that for each bucket um which means that if it takes longer whoever's there doing it just has to go okay Number one, this goes in the bucket first and it goes into this bucket and this bucket and this bucket. Number two only goes to that horse and it's this much. So I've done that um, and every time I feed at the moment, I am feeding the bottom bucket. So because when I make the feeds and stack them, obviously the bottom one's the first one made. Even though it's dry, I got a thing about leaving feeds pre-made for a long time. So I always feed the bottom bucket. Um, and then I remake it and stick it to the top. So one of my students' feed doesn't matter, but I'm actually rotating the feeds as I feed too and replenishing so that at any point in time, if I'm, you know, incapable of feeding and I need someone else, 
they can do it. Um, I would have actually taken a little video of my feed room, except that <laughs> it's an absolute pigsty, which is not how I normally keep it at all. But I'm at the point where if something gets dropped, it's sacrificed. Until I can bend over and breathe again, it stays there, unless I really need it. <laughs> I should invest in one of those, those long-handled grubby hand things. Um, that you can grab things from a distance, because otherwise... You just, it, as long as it's not in the way, it lives there. That's all there is. <laughs> um, if you know me from before Heavily Pregnant, you'd know that I'm a bit meticulous about my stuff, especially my feed room, my tack room, my horse float, uh, none of which <laughs> look anywhere like they should anymore. So, but I thought that'd be a really cool tip. Um, it's something that I would use also if I was going away and I had students feeding, um, if there was, you know, if I was sick or injured or something and if I could pre-mix everything um, before. That doesn't really make sense because I wouldn't know if I'm getting sick or injured. But, you know, you get the idea. You get the idea, I hope. Um, so for me at this point in time, it's something that I'm doing. So that anyone who walks into my feed room... As long as they know the horses' names, they can. It's literally just step by step, like kindy instructions for everyone. Do this, do that. Feed it here, feed it there. Um, they just need to know which horse is actually which. <laughs> At the end of the day, um, and then they hand out the feeds, which is pretty good. Anyway, hope that helps.